Okay, good evening again. Uh, let's take a quick look at the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ McClellan oscillators. Okay, in fact, I'm going to change this to NDX. How about that? Update and And let's see here, put that back on the screen. Okay, bingo. So let's take a quick uh, look at something I look at quickly at the end of each day um, as just, you know, one of the things I look at. So here we are uh, on the NASDAQ McClellan, uh, I mean, in the, the, one second, I should make this. This is going back to, this is going back to, um, September, August of last year. So it's about a year and two months, this time frame. And you can see the best points of entry for to play a um, reflex bounce or retracement bounce is always when we get to what's this minus 90 level. The minus 90 level, okay? And uh, we can clearly see that in the case of the NASDAQ, it's more like around the minus 77 minus 66 minus 68 here end of July these are the perfect times even minus 52 and if these are these are the times when you can literally buy hands down which nobody does because that's the scariest time and bang you know over the next couple of days over the next week the market bounces hard and uh, basically gets overbought again uh, in this vicinity around the 40 to 60 you know 67 obviously very overbought but anyway that's what's going on so Right now we're at minus 37, so we're intermediate oversold. And look what happens, you know, this happened in May, this happened as recently as in August, we bounce hard. So it's very likely, I'm just showing you probabilities, it's a probabilities game, okay, uh, that we will bounce from here and then go up here and get overbought again before we fall, before we, before we basically turn down again. Or the other alternative scenario is always there that we completely melt down, get down to with this minus 65, 68, minus 70 level. In which case, the you know we would, we know um, it's it's very it's a very high odds, 80% odds that we have a quick reflex bounce, which has to be played on the long side. So the same thing here. We're at minus 62. The last time we were at minus 62 was back at the at, in July. We did bounce from there before we fell down, fell back again and so we seem to be following this pattern now every time I look back in February I keep in mind I've been showing this February 5th pattern the January sell off and then February 5th the market turn and um, we went down to as low as uh, the first I believe it's February 3rd we went down to about minus 64 we're at minus 62 right now so if this pattern is going to play out then we're going to have a big bounce all right before we pull back again so just showing you patterns okay so this gets filled and then we fall again um, that possibility is still there if this is the case like it was in middle of July then we're gonna bounce up till about here it's a feeble bounce and then we'll fall hard again and get down to with this minus 90 level both scenarios under the table so again monitor this under the day you can do it just type in go to stockcharts.com type in dollar NAMO or NYMO um, I don't know if the parameters are set exactly the way I have it set out, but this is what I see. All right, so just a quick primer on this particular uh, one. You can put anything in there, actually. So let me just show you. You can put, uh, let's say we put the... Uh, let's say we put this, the Russell. Um, actually, it comes out very differently, so I'm not going to cover that. But it doesn't come out like that. Um... Okay, so that's it. So we'll we'll stick to the NIMO and uh, the uh, the Nasdaq uh, and and the New York Stock Exchange McCann oscillator. And as you can clearly see, um, what's going on? Let me just uh, show one other quick thing here. Um, let me type that back so it doesn't get confusing for people. These are little things that I notice. Okay, so just you know, right or wrong, this worked for me, so I'm just sharing it with everyone. Let me get my squiggly line. 
look what's going on here. We're falling hard here, but the McClellan, uh, but the Bollinger Band on the top is actually rising. So there is a big, you know, we, we're, we're creating a, um, we're creating a wide sort of megaphone pattern. If you want to look at it this way, this would be sort of the megaphone on the Bollinger. Megaphones generally resolve up to the upside and uh, or to the downside, depending on where you are with the megaphone. So if look at it here, you know, moving up. Now this is being stretched down, and we are below the Bollinger's here. Uh, we have overshot the Bollinger's. Generally, that means that we're going to get into the Bollinger's. So if this is a megaphone being played out, then it's a possibility is there um, that we bounce really hard. Now all this happens. Let me give you the quick reasons why you know if the perfect storm or the perfect you know comes into play on 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 the on the be uh, bullish side. We have Scotland staying within the Union, so you know there's no breakup. Uh, the yes vote is a no vote. Uh, we have Janet Yellen, which I believe she's not going to rock the boat that big. Okay, the word "considerable time" between you know for interest rates might be removed, but she could placate that by saying putting in other terms. I don't think she's in the business of breaking down this house of cards that she's built, that is starting to build, by one major statement that's going to rock the boat and get everything tumbling down. I repeat again, slight increase in interest rates, gradual regulated increase in interest rates um, is, um, is, is very healthy for the markets. It's healthy for the financials uh, and it's very healthy for the markets. But a uncontrolled rapid rise in rates from this 2.59% level all the way shut up um, to let's say 3 uh, would rock the boat hard. It, it, it thinks, throw things out of whack. Um, rates would go crazy, the mortgage market would, would fall apart, and all kinds of things, you know, which are correlated would break down. And this has a profound effect on emerging markets. Emerging markets are reliant on low U.S. interest rates also. Um, and any, si any sort of dis uh, uh, imbalance would cause havoc. So I don't think she's in the business of doing that. And I think... Uh, that's what's going to happen on Thursday. She's going to moderate the language. She might remove the word considerable time um, for interest rate hikes. And uh, But again, let's, let's keep a close eye on that. So the third thing that might happen that might work uh, uh, all right is that uh, the Alibaba IPO is, uh, is uh, handled very well. And there's no wacky distributions or anything on the day that it comes out. Um, and that we have a, a, another part of the pillar which is very important is that we have somewhat lukewarm economic numbers between now um, and uh, throughout the week at least till the Fed meeting or so um, um, because if we have too hot economic numbers and, and, and these construction numbers or, or housing numbers are really out of whack and really strong then obviously that raises the case for a quicker rise in rates which the market doesn't want to see so that's it. Uh, we have end of the week, uh, end of the month uh, window dressers uh, going to come in, I believe, at the last part of September. I don't think September is going to be a big washout, even though we're seeing the typical mid-month, remember? 15th of each month, we kind of get these type of big moves uh, down, you know, this resets. You've seen this happen on April 15th when we launched our service, the Clueless 8 service. We saw it on May 15th. We saw it in June 15th, July 15th. We saw it in August. Um, the first part of August actually um, and um, and then now here we are in, in the middle of September reminder again I did say that September 8th was going to be uh, a short-term peak in the market then we're gonna consolidate and then we're gonna have a move up going into towards um, towards the end of the month so let's see if that pans out that's it for tonight um, I'm going to put up static charts on the uh, on a lot of good ones that I want people to study uh, that I posted all through the day uh, on the stocks that I've been looking at and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you again for listening and thank you for your support. Hope you enjoy the new website and um, and that's it for tonight. We'll re-engage tomorrow morning. Stay strong.